Hello. I know that there are a lot of you out there right now that would like to make dinner rolls, that would like to learn how to make dinner rolls, and for some reason they they intimidate you, and I don't want them, I don't want dinner rolls to intimidate you. Um, I made a video about, I don't know, four years ago on how to make bread, and the dough that I used in that video is the same dough that I'm going to make these dinner rolls with today. And it is the same dough that I use to make scones and pizza and breadsticks and soup bread bowls and cinnamon rolls. And I mean, it's just a good, good basic bread recipe. And we're going to make dinner rolls with it today. Um, that video that I showed how to make bread, I did this before pre-COVID. And when I did it, I, I did, it just came out of me. My mouth just said, I want everybody in the world to know how to make this bread. And I still feel that way today about my bread recipe, which is my mother's, probably her mother's. I, mean, I know it's her mother's. And, and I, I just want everybody to know how to make this bread. And it, when COVID hit, that video went crazy. I cannot believe it. It has two and a half million views on it and the comments have been wonderful. So I'm going to leave a link to that video and, and another couple videos for you. I, I made this, or yes, I made this with Ellie, my da our daughter. That is a really special video to me. So I'm going to get started and show you what we're doing. And I'm going to take you step by step through this and there is no reason on earth that you can't feel confident in making these dinner rolls. Hopefully as we're going through these steps I'll be able to answer some of the questions that you've had on my previous video of baking bread. A lot of you missed the temperature. It is 375 and these rolls will cook for 15 to 20 minutes. The first thing that I want to talk about is the yeast and a lot of you want to know, do you use the instant, do you fast rise? It doesn't matter. I cannot even tell a difference. This yeast comes in a tight pack. When you open it, it's just, I don't know, it's just wrapped really tight. Um, and it keeps in your freezer if you want to keep extra on hand. Or I like to buy this active, the, the Red Star. I like that yeast because it comes with a little lid. It's put that in your refrigerator when you're not using it or if you want the packets that's fine too it'll take a couple of these packets to make the bread because it uses three tablespoons of yeast now if you put two tablespoons of yeast it's still going to work two tablespoons is going to be fine i prefer three tablespoons of yeast but sometimes i mess up and i put two and it still works vacuum packed. That's what I was trying to remember. It feels like a brick, but it isn't. As soon as you open it, then it's ready to pour. Okay, so what you need to do is get something that will hold two cups of water because you're going to put one cup of water in this but it is going to rise, it's going to double. So you need to make sure it's in a bowl, you can just put it in a bowl, whatever. And I'll put three tablespoons of yeast in here. And then I add a tablespoon of sugar because that helps it rise faster. It helps it activate, it gives it something to eat. And then you want to add a cup of water. It needs to be warm water, it doesn't want to be hot, you don't want to kill it don't want it cold, you want it warm. And just stir that up and let it sit and rise while you're getting the rest of your ingredients together. I'm gonna set this right here so you can watch it while we're putting the ingredients in our bowl. I've been asked how big this bowl is and I I don't know, but it hold it's big. <laughs> I don't know how big it is. Um, but we need 10 cups of flour. And I've also had people ask me where I get this. And I'll tell you, but I can't talk and count at the same time.
Okay, so that's 10 cups of flour. And I was saying that you can get this, these buckets, if you go to your uh, local grocery store, sometimes they will sell them to you at the bakery when they're done with them. Sometimes they even give them to you. But that's where I got a lot of these buckets and they are great for storing your flour in. Now you want to add a tablespoon of salt, just regular table salt, and about a half a cup of sugar. If you don't want to add that much sugar, that's fine. You can substitute it with honey and that's great. You can cut back a little on the sugar, but I wouldn't cut, I wouldn't cut it all out. If you cut all the sugar or the honey out, I am not going to guarantee these rolls. Okay, so just mix that sugar and salt in here. And then look at our yeast. Isn't that beautiful? Make a little well in your flour and dump it in. And then you add three cups of water to this. Okay, there's two cups. And another cup. So three cups of water on top of the cup that was in here to begin with that had the yeast in it. So total in here, you've got four cups of water, three that I just added and one that had the yeast in it. And then you need to add a half a cup of oil and it doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. If you want to use coconut oil, if you want to use vegetable oil, I've always used the vegetable oil. I have used coconut before though, and it is kind of good. Okay, so just mix this up. All right, so it takes about five minutes to get that mixed up, and it's going to be really shaggy. And that's okay, just, just take it about five minutes, I suppose, and try and get all the, the bread off the side of the walls of the pan and off the bottom and kind of get it mixed in there, but, but then just let it sit for a little while, like 10 minutes, let it sit there. And it, it really does do something to let it sit there for about 10 minutes. They, there's something magical happens with it and it makes it so that when you come back to it in 10 minutes, you're able to work it a little bit better. This is how it looks after about 10, 15 minutes. And then I take it and finish working the flour in with my hands. The other cool thing about this recipe is you don't have very many dishes when you're done. Pretty much a bowl and a spoon. Okay guys, however you are the most comfortable kneading the dough, that's where you're going to do it. If it's on your counter, if it's on your tabletop, or if it's on the floor, I have been kneading my dough on the floor since I got married. For me, it's just easier. All right, see this dough, this flour right here? If my dough was really hard right now, hard to mix and, and felt kind of tough, I would take this extra flour and I would just toss it and stop trying to work it in. But this dough feels really good just the way it is right now. So I'm not going to try to work all of that flour into it. That would just be causing me a lot of work. And the dough doesn't need all that extra flour that's on the bottom of the pan. All right.
Okay, that only took about five minutes and it's all mixed in and it feels good. It isn't dry and it's not really sticky. It just feels good. And now I'm going to cover this with a cotton towel and I'm going to place this bowl somewhere in the house where it's kind of warm. It'll take this about an hour to rise. Okay, this has been rising for an hour and it looks really good to me right now. If I wasn't ready for the rolls, we could just punch that down and let it rise again and it'd be great, maybe even better in a couple hours, but we're ready to make rolls right now, so let's get going. I need to tell you, I do have a lot of people ask me what kind of flour I use, and it really doesn't matter. I use an all-purpose flour. If you wanna use a bread flour, that's great, but I don't think it makes that big a difference, and I don't go back and forth between cake flours and bread flour. I just use all-purpose for everything I make. I'm going to use a good amount of shortening Crisco, and I know some countries don't have this. You can use whatever the equivalent in your country is to a shortening, or you can use butter. I like to use this Crisco because that's what my mom used, and that's the only reason I need. I'm going to just cut this right in half. And then these pans hold, I think each pan holds 24 rolls, 20 or 24 rolls. I'll just take a glob like that and I shape it in my hands and kind of form it so it's a little button so the top of it's nice and, and round. And the back of it is like where I pinch it together. And this is how I can tell if I need to take some of it off. You can just kind of feel it in your hand how big you want these to be. And so that's where I'll take the dough from if it's too big, or that's where I'll, where I'll add some more to it if it, does, if it feels like it's too little of a ball. And generally, I'll take a little pinch off. I put plenty in my hand and I shape that. And if, if it looks all yucky, like not shaped very good, just kind of roll it around in your hand for a second and knead it again. And if it needs a little grease on it, and that's nice that you've got a pan that you've just greased really good because you can just flip it over there and, and get it greased up. Yeah. I know some people, they are really fussy about how their pan of rolls look and I won't name any names, but she's my sister-in-law. And she's got a little scale and she actually weighs hers. And they look so professional. But I just do it in my hand and I don't care. And if you're just learning how to do this, if you're just starting out, it's not gonna be perfect. Who cares? Just make them and be proud of them. Really, just make them and take them to your dinner or feed them to your guests, your company, your little ones, and be proud of it. Mine don't always look the greatest, and sometimes my dough it doesn't look as good as others. It looks okay today. I've had it look better. And 
I would love it to be absolutely perfect for your video, and but that's not the way it is. Um, sometimes you've got a lot of humidity in the house, or maybe where you live it's, there's a lot of humidity, and maybe when you were making your bread today, or your dough, maybe you thought you had way too much water in it, or you, you kept, don't add more flour, just just use it. If, if, if you think it needs more flour, you're gonna keep adding flour and adding flour. You're never gonna get enough in it. Just use it the way it is. And the next time you make the dough, cut back on the liquid. Maybe you have to cut back a quarter of a cup, but it just depends on where you live and what the, the humidity is like and how heavy your flour was when you put it in the in your bowl mixing it. There's a lot of variables to it, but just go with it because it's all gonna it's all gonna turn out good. It it doesn't have to look perfect every single time. And the more you make it, the more you'll get a feel for it. How how much liquid maybe you need to cut back on your own recipe. Get you a card and make your own recipe from my recipe for where you live and just know that, well, where I live, I think I'll just put nine and a half cups of flour in it and I'm gonna cut back on the water too because it was just so sticky I couldn't even work with it. And also when you're working with your dough, if it's just so sticky you can't even work with it, get your hands some grease on them and, it, and you, Instead of flour, instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to add more flour, just get your hands some grease on them and work the dough with a little greasy hand so it doesn't stick to you. But I've seen people try to compensate by adding more flour and it just never seems to work. It takes, I think, between start to finish, you can get a batch of rolls done in three hours. But if you wanna stretch that out over the whole day, stretch it out because this dough can raise. You can punch it down and let it raise again and again if you need to. Don't sweat it. Some people like a little salt on theirs. My sister doesn't. But my kids like just a little, just enough to hmm, barely barely taste oops that was a lot but just a few little sprinkles of salt on the top can add a little mm. if i were making scones today that's what we call fried bread where we live in utah and idaho we call it we call them scones but if i were making scones today i would just take this in my hand just like I do my roll, but I would make it a lot thinner. And Chad would have a Dutch oven outside on the patio with some hot oil in it. And I would just drop it down into the pot of oil and it'd be done in about two minutes. If you are my grandchildren watching, or my great, great grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, whoever you are, I think it's pretty awesome that technology has made it so we can do rolls together. That's pretty cool. And if you were here, We'd be having a yummy dinner tonight. It's gotten kind of chilly outside and rainy since we started making our rolls. So I'm really glad to be able to place them right down here next to the fireplace and in a half an hour I'll turn them around and it'll take about an hour here where it's warm and they'll be ready to go in the oven. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you what they look like right now. And Chad, they don't look the best, do they? I mean, you've uh, seen... Oh, I've seen a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. I kind of did yeah. those in a hurry. Okay. But they'll they'll be good. You know they oh, will. Yeah. They, look, they look okay. Oh, yeah. Those will be good. I'm going to put them in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes on 375. I've already preheated my oven. It's good to go. This is the funnest part of my whole video is when I take it out of the oven and I call Chad up to be my tester. And of course you've had oh, this yeah. all your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, and obviously 42 years later, I'm not sick of it. I thoroughly enjoy a nice roll for dinner. And you know, number one, if you have these rolls for dinner or for a meal, uh, it adds to the, your, your meal. Or you can have just two or three of these and that will be your meal with a, a little bit of butter, jam, or peanut butter and honey, or even it goes great with cottage cheese and peaches. Yeah, so, those are Bonnie's peaches that she made yep, us. Yep. Right there. And the juice is the best and, part. Oh yeah, I really like Adam's peanut butter with a little honey in it. Mix. Or some homemade jam that my sister-in-law made this. Yep. So this dish right here yeah. was a gift uh, to my mom and dad on their 50th anniversary from their siblings. Right. And so uh, my mom and dad gave this to Sherry, uh, which is their oldest great-granddaughter. Yes. And so when she's ready for it, she there can have go. it any time. <laughs> okay, tell <laughs> and, us about And she knows that. Yeah, first. she knows that. Yeah. Tell us about your dinner roll. Well, my dinner roll is just that. It's going to be my dinner. I'm going to put <laughs> a little bit of peanut butter on one, and I'm going to put some jam on another one with my uh, peaches and cottage cheese. Mm. And they are, you, you can smell them. This just adds uh, to the aroma of your house when or your home when you cook the, this bread. It just smells so good. He wouldn't lie. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> he really wouldn't lie. <laughs> He'd tell me to do something different. Not on different. film because I don't want to get caught lying. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you. I love you all. I love you little kids. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.